Earlier this year, we released a video covering all of the targeting options for Twitter as of 2022. If you're interested in that, you can check out this video right here. But in that rundown, I kind of skipped over retargeting because one, that video is already long enough by itself. But two, I thought that the retargeting options warranted a video of their own. Well, guess what? This is that video. So today I want to go through all of the targeting options available on the Twitter ads platform as of 2022. To get started building retargeting audiences in Twitter, we need to go to the audience manager. I'm on the main homepage for Twitter ads and the audience manager can be found under tools and then audiences. Once you land in the audience manager, you'll be able to see all of the audiences that you've already created for your account. You'll be able to see the audience name, the type, whether it is ready or too small to use, which that bottom one is for us, the last time it was updated, and then the amount of users that it will target on Twitter. You can see here that the smallest audience size we have is 636 people. The minimum for a retargeting audience on Twitter is 100 users. It's a relatively small number, and you'll be able to see that number in this section. But to cover the different types of retargeting audiences on Twitter, I'm just gonna go through the creation process for each of them. So let's come over here to create audience. These are going to be the five types of retargeting audiences that I'm going to go through today. And just to make it simple, we'll go through them in order from left to right. So let's start off with a list or an upload of your customers. The first thing you get to do is to create an audience name and a description, which is optional. As you could see, when we were on the audience manager page, you do see the audience name represented. So it's important to make sure that you name your audience well, so that you know what audience that is when you're on the manager page or when you're trying to apply it to a campaign. Once you've done that, you just need to scroll down and upload your list. You can utilize a CSV, TSV, or TXT file for this. Now, unfortunately, Twitter does not do a very good job of telling you what format you need to upload this list information in. So rather than talking about it on this page, let's jump into a Twitter help article that will tell you the different data points that you can use. And that information is gonna be in this first paragraph here. It says you can upload lists of email addresses, mobile advertising IDs, which are iOS advertising identifiers and Google advertising IDs, or when not available, Android IDs. And there are links for each of those for you to learn more about them. You can also use Twitter handles or Twitter user IDs. So if you have any of those pieces of information, you can use those in the appropriate file format and then upload them to the platform. The last step in this process is that it says to wait for the upload. So don't close or minimize your window while you're waiting for this customer list to upload. And for larger files, it might take a little while. Overall, it says that lists will be processed within 48 hours of upload on average. So overall, pretty simple, pretty easy, and relatively comparable to custom audience lists that we see on other platforms as well. The second type of retargeting audience we create is going to be a website activity audience, or basically creating lists of users based on the actions that they took on your website. Just like customer uploads, we get to give this audience a name and a description. And then down below is where we're actually going to set the audience rules. So the first thing we need to do is choose the source of the user list. You can utilize either your Twitter universal website tag, which is recommended, or a Twitter single event website tag. For the most part, I would suggest that you use the universal website tag and then narrow down with the filters down below. But if you have something that is a specific action that does not fire on a web page, maybe you have a button click that you're trying to track or something that goes through an iframe, you might wanna use a single event website tag to track that instead. But for now, let's just look at what it looks like with a universal website tag. The options are only going to be to include certain audiences. The default is going to be to include visitors to any web page across your entire website. So this is basically an all pages, all visitors, audience, anybody who came to the site, no restrictions. We do have the ability to customize this a little bit. If we choose this drop down, we can use visitors to a specific web page. And now we have a little bit more of an option. We can use website URLs, either contain or equals, and then add in any information that we want here. So let's say in your advertising naming convention, you have an entire folder on your site that contains all of your landing pages and you only want to target people who visited one of your landing pages. In that case, you would add that language for the folder into the website URL field here, like this. 
and then anybody who visits a page that contains slash LP slash in it will be added to this audience. You have the option to extend your audience a little bit as well. You can add more people. You'll see that the function is going to be an or. Then you have the same builder down below adding people based on pages that they visited either because the URL contains certain language or because it equals specifically the language that you add in here. As I mentioned, this is an or statement and the language that Twitter used for the button was add people. This this is only going to make your audience larger and help you reach more people. There are no options within Twitter website retargeting audiences to narrow the audience only to people of even more specific pages. You will not be able to say the website URL contains LP and it must also contain some other language. The prime example for this would be anybody who visits the LP landing pages and then exclude anybody who visits a thank you page, for example. That way you're targeting only non-converting users. In many platforms, you can do that all within the same audience, but not on Twitter. For Twitter, instead, you would need to create the audience that is anybody who visited your landing page, and then you would not have an extension on top of that. And then you would create a second website visitors audience that targeted only people who visited a page that had thank you in the language, and then exclude those users from the campaign. So again, we can still get there. It's just not all encompassed within one audience like we might want it to be. Once you get to the end of that, and I think I skipped this for the previous audience, you need to check the box to make sure that you have read and agreed to all of the custom audience and conversion tracking terms and conditions and policies. You'll notice that the audience is grayed out. If I were to add in the audience name up at the top and check this box, I would then be able to create this audience, but you will not be able to create anything until you have checked this box. Let's move on to the next type of retargeting audience. Unfortunately, we don't have any accounts that we're working on that have app promotions within Twitter. So for app activity and app activity combination audiences, I'll show you what the builder looks like at the beginning and talk through it a little bit, but I won't be able to create a specific example. So let's start off with the first one, which is just app activity, where you can create an audience of your app users who took a specific action, such as buying an item. And as I mentioned, we don't have any of these set up. So you'll see a page that looks like this that encourages you to utilize the events manager, but also it shows you the different integrations that we have for mobile app conversion tracking tools. These tools allow us to get campaign reporting on metrics like app installs, signups, and other actions taken, and they will automatically create tailored audiences for your account within Twitter based on the tools that they have available. So there are five different platforms that if you're using these for your app tracking, all you need to do is connect your Twitter ads account to these platforms and you'll be on your way. Now for the second type of app campaign, we'll actually get to see a little bit of the Twitter builder, regardless of the fact that we haven't integrated with any tools just yet. So let's go ahead and click this one. Here we can see we get to name it just like all the other ones. And then the audience rules section is going to be a bit more robust than what we get to see for website audiences. First, you'll get to choose the app activity audience itself. So these are going to be based on those events that I mentioned in the previous page, whether it's an app install, a conversion action, or any of those in-app actions, you'll have an audience that's based off of those. And then you get to decide the frequency with which that person has taken that action, equal to, greater than, fewer than, all these options. And then you can set it up for one time, all the way up until 15 times. And then you get to customize the look back window if you want to, whether it's one day up to 30 days. So for example, if we're trying to leave people alone after they have installed the app for one week before we retarget them and encourage them to use the app more robustly, we can create an audience of people who signed up via the app equal to one time in the last seven days. And now that audience is anybody who signed up in the last seven days. We would then exclude that audience from our prospecting campaigns, but add it to our delayed retargeting campaigns to make sure that we're reaching users after the first week to encourage them to engage with the app. Now, unlike the website visitors audience, we do have the opportunity to narrow our audience when it comes to app activity. So as I mentioned, the people who need to match this first step and also match, and then you get an additional line of builders. You can continue doing this. As you can see, you can narrow your audience further. So there's a lot of customization there. You can then also add people if you want to. So you get a further or statement and then adding in whichever clarifying details you want down here. And then even further, you get the opportunity to exclude people. So let's say within these first two brackets, you have all of the different users that you want, but you also want to exclude certain people based on the activity that they have taken. 
you can add that here and you can even narrow this audience even further to make sure it is a further subset of a specific list of people. So lots of capabilities within the app combination audiences. These are going to feel very similar to the capabilities that we have on Google ads or Facebook ads as those platforms are a bit more robust. I'm a little bit surprised that they don't have these capabilities for the website retargeting audiences, but for whatever reason, they don't. Now for the last audience type, I want to clarify that this one is a little bit different. It is a retargeting audience only to exclude users from your entire account. And that's a do not reach list. So let's go ahead and click that. To start off, this one has a name already given to it. Do not reach lists. Pretty simple, right? You can give a description if you want to. And then you have the same capability to upload an audience list in the same way that we did for a custom audience upload. Now there's not a lot of detail here. Again, just like the custom audience upload. So let's hop into another Twitter help article to learn a little bit more about these do not reach lists. As it says here, there may be people that you just don't want to have your ads targeted to. And this would be a categorical exclusion. This would not be in the same vein as you're thinking with a customer list, unless you just never want to reach any of your customers on the platform. Think of this more as people who have unsubscribed or opted out of your marketing, especially with GDPR or any of the other privacy options. If they have told you do not target me, adding them to a do not target list would be a great option. As I mentioned, you upload a do not target list in the same way that you would for a custom audience upload. And once the status is ready in the platform, all of your campaigns that run within the corresponding ad account will automatically exclude people who've matched that do not target list. Since it's automatically and universally applied, you don't need to go in each campaign and add this as an exclusion. It will be excluded from your entire account. And then the last piece to know is that you only get one do not reach list per ad account, but you can edit, delete, and recreate it at any time. So if you create a list this month, and then over the next couple of months, you have more people opt out of your marketing and you need to update the list, all you need to do is export a new file, come into Twitter, edit that list, and upload a new one, and you'll be all set. Overall, there are a number of ways that you can retarget your target audience on Twitter. Even if we might not see as robust of website retargeting as we might like, there certainly is a lot of ways that you can engage with them on the platform. Hopefully you found this quick overview of each of those retargeting types helpful and you can start applying them in your account. But as always, if you have any questions or any additional topics that you'd like to hear about, feel free to leave us a note in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.